you are most welcome to this talk. Now, unusually on this talk, I will not uh, be giving any of my own opinions. At least I'll be trying hard not to give any of my own opinions. And because we're going to be talking about therapeutics and a drug, uh, I have to tell you, it's in the rules, I have to tell you that you must never take any drugs based on anything I say in any of my videos. Always go to your own prescriber. This is for educational purposes only. Right, now having got that out of the way, that this report is from the, I'll show you, it is from the uh, All India Institute of Medical Sciences based in New Delhi. So this is a fairly well, well, very well known Indian research institution. And uh, the study is on the prophylactic role of ivermectin in sars coronavirus 2 infection amongst healthcare workers. Now, these are the authors of the paper here, and we see that these are all associated with the All India Institute of Medical Sciences. And this, this area here uh, is, is in uh, east of India, in, uh, I can't remember the name of the state now, but it's in eastern India anyway. So th they're all the authors there. The links are all there for you to look at. Um, this study is dealing with prophylaxis, preventative care. So there's the full paper there. You can read it for yourself. Now, um, this is a preprint. This is not in a peer-reviewed journal. So you have to take that into account. Um, and they, the authors say this. They say that on the top. This is a preprint, a preliminary version of a manuscript that's not been... It's not completed peer review, etc. So read that for yourself. So that's kind of the, the provisos that are associated with this. But these, the, the, the authors here are, as far as I know, they're all physicians. And they're all associated with the uh, All India Institute of Medical Sciences. So I think, I think at least what they say is worth listening to. So let, let's, let's dive straight into it. Now, um, Th th these are the various bits. Research Square seems to be their preprint server, as far as I can gather. And um, here, are, here are all the links, so um, click on those, check them for yourself. I'm just going to report my best understanding of what they say. So I spent the last few hours uh, reading this paper and going through it, and I think I've got a bit of a gist of it. I'm not saying my interpretation is perfect, but I'm going to be giving my best interpretation to the best of my ability. Uh, no, so prophylactic. So prophylactic, of course, is that which prevents something. That's which prevents disease in this case. Role of ivermectin in SARS coronavirus to infection amongst healthcare workers. Now, background briefly here, healthcare workers are vulnerable to getting infected with SARS coronavirus too. That is certainly the case. Uh, preventing healthcare workers from getting infection is a priority to main healthcare services. Well, well that's true. But um it's also uh, it's also important for well I would certainly consider it important to, uh, for me as an individual healthcare worker not to get sick as well. So both are true. We want to look after the individuals and we want to uh, maintain the service. So nothing to disagree with there really. Um, uh, the next thing still in the background: the therapeutic and preventive role of ivermectin in COVID nineteen is being investigated. That's what this study is about based on promising results in uh, lab-based in vitro studies of oral ivermectin. This study looks at the prophylactic role of oral ivermectin. So we're looking at the prophylactic role of ivermectin. Now, there are other papers that look at treatment, but I'm sticking... It's actually... It's actually a, well, I wouldn't say it's complicated, but there's a few things to get right. So we're just going to stick in this video to the prophylactic role. Right. Method. Prospective cohort study was undertaken at the All India Institute of Medical Sciences. So that's good. Prospective means the study was done from a particular day going forward. This data was actually collected in, uh, I think it was October, November last year, when it, this was actually collected. Two doses of oral ivermectin. The dose was 300, that's micrograms, that's a mu micrograms per kilogram of the individual's body weight with a gap of 72 hours. So they give one dose, they'd wait for three days, and then they give a second dose, three day gap. And that's all they gave for the month. That was it. That was considered to be prophylaxis for the month. Now this 
presumably is explained by the fact that ivermectin resides in the tissues for a period of time. So just back of the envelope calculation for me, what this means, uh, so 300, uh, 0.3 milligrams is 300 micrograms, it's the same thing. So they were giving, as we said, 300 micrograms, so that's 0.3 milligrams. So if we say the healthcare worker in question weighs 70 kilograms, that would be a dose of 21 milligrams on one day and then a dose of 21 milligrams three days later. Now, this is interesting. We had Dr. Tess Laurie, who's one of the, in my view, one of the world's leading me medical academics on the, on the channel um, a few weeks ago. She'd been on twice. Um, now, she reported that she, her understanding is that the cost of ivermectin is $168 a kilo, but suppose it's 10 times that. But, we, but let, let's suppose it's $168 a kilo. Um, that, that, that means it's uh, 0.168, so is that 16 cents? Anyway, um, <clears throat> yeah, it is, isn't it? 16.8 cents a gram. Um, so that means a milligram it costs 0.000168 dollars for a milligram and the dose here was uh, 21 milligrams so that would be associated of a cost of 0 0.003528 dollars so so that would be like that would be like uh, 10 cents that would be one cent so it's a little over a little over a third of a cent isn't it by, by my reckoning uh, in, in other words this doesn't cost anything um, so I mean, what this means is that the cost of preparing this drug and putting it into tablets, it would cost way more, I would have thought, to put it into tablets than it does actually for the drug itself. Very, very cheap to mass produce. And uh, Indian uh, pharmaceutical companies are brilliant at producing huge amounts of generics. Uh, that they are, There's a very well-established industry in India on that. Now, um, employees at this institution where this study was done uh, 3,892 employees, uh, 300, th sorry, th 3,892 employees, 3,523 participated in the study. So pretty good uptake, a lot of them took part in the study. Now, uh, the, they described it as ivermectin, the ones that had ivermectin. Now, it's a slightly confusing, actually, because there was about 5.3% took the first dose and then didn't take the second dose. But the, the, the total, so it was about 62 percent, uh, 62 point something percent took both doses. So there was some poor compliance amongst the staff. But the ivermectin uptake, uh, the group that took one or two doses, was 2,384 individuals. And as we say, um, the vast majority of those took the two doses. So anyway, that's 67.5 percent of all the staff. And none uptake, uh, there was... 1,114 didn't take it, that's 32.5% 32, um, 32 of the staff. So you can see there, this is not a randomised controlled trial, but can you, you can see there we've got two groups, haven't we? We've got one group took the ivermectin, we've got one group did not take the ivermectin. So it's an ideal uh, comparator group, ideal comparator group. Now, going on to the results... Um, first of all, um, developing symptom, de de development of symptomatic infection. So 331 subjects developed symptomatic infection that may have been COVID. Symptoms suggested of COVID-19. And remember, um, there, was, there was quite a few more, wasn't there, in the, in the ivermectin group uh, compared to the, uh, the non-ivermectin group, what we could call the control group. So there was more in the ivermectin group. But of the 331 who uh, got symptoms, 103, uh, 131 were in the takers group who took the ivermectin, 200 were further from the non-takers group. So even though there was more people in this group, less of them uh, got symptomatic infection. And that works out at uh, symptomatic infection, ivermectin takers, 6% of the whole workforce got uh, symptomatic disease, what may have been COVID-19, uh, non-takers 15%, so we see it's more. But of course, the study went on to do PCR testing, of course. And when PCR testing was done, uh, on they, they did PCR tests on um, 201 individuals. Um, the ivermectin takers, 2% of them 
got uh, PCR positive. Uh, none takers, 11.7% got PCR positive. And uh, we see a huge difference there between the two groups. So ivermectin, 2% tested, PCR positive. None ivermectin takers, 11.7% tested, PCR positive. Now, the PCR test, of course, is exquisitely sensitive. We all, we all know this. So if the PCR test didn't detect viral load in the, in, in, in the ivermectin group, or only in 2% of the ivermectin group, if it didn't detect the virus, that means we can pretty well say there was no virus there because this test is very sensitive. And you don't need me to tell you that if there's no virus there, you can't transmit it on. So it is highly reasonable to assume that these people would not be infectious as well because you can't pass on what you haven't got. If I haven't got something in my hand, I can't give it to you. It's, it's obvious. So big difference there. Ivermectin takers, 2% got infected. Non-ivermectin takers, 11.7% got, got infected as determined by the PCR test with obvious implications for transmission. Now, healthcare workers who had taken two doses. Now, if they took one dose, that didn't seem to make a difference. So one dose wasn't enough. They needed two doses, 72 hours apart. But the ones who'd taken two doses had a significantly, and this is, this is the, uh, the, the 0 0.05 uh, significant level, the 95% significant level, significantly lower risk of contracting COVID-19 disease in the following month, and the relative risk there was 0.18%. In other words, they, only had eight, they were only 18% as likely to get it. The adjusted relative risk was 0.17%. Um, in other words, 83% level of protection based on this study. Now, <clears throat> what about adverse effects? Well, 1.8% reported adverse events which were mild and self-limiting, none of which required medical intervention. Most drugs have some side effects, but 1.8% mild and self-limiting side effects. Right, conclusion and relevance. This is not me, this is this is the, what the study is saying. This is This is not me, this is all in all in here. Um, it's all in here. Check it out. It got, it's got all these sections in. Um, conclusion and relevance. Two doses of oral, oral ivermectin, 300 micrograms, that's 0 0.3 milligrams per kilogram, 72 hours apart, as chemo prophylaxis among healthcare workers reduces the risk of COVID-19 infection by 83% in the following month. And because, as we saw, if they're not testing PCR positive, they can't transmit it on as well. So not only are they being protected, they're breaking the chain of transmission. One would assume. The paper doesn't claim that, but it's hard to think anything else. <coughs> um, the authors say safe, effective and low-cost chemoprophylaxis uh, have relevance in the containment of the pandemic alongside vaccine. So they are, they are saying it prevents transmission, basically, without saying it. Now, this is not instead of vaccine. This is as well as vaccine. This is an important point. We need a vaccination. I'm eagerly waiting for my second vaccine. Um, this is as well as. So we want to optimise the health of the immune system with things like vitamin D. We want to prevent the disease with vaccination. But this is another tool that these authors claim... Uh, has relevance. Uh, director of the All, Institute, All India Institute of Medicine. Um, earlier, at least 20 to 25 healthcare workers were getting infected with the virus daily. Uh, after the workers started taking ivermectin, the number of infections has come down to one or two per day. So that is his uh, conclusion. Quite an interesting site, actually. Check it out for yourself. Um, lots of interesting stuff on there. Um, right, so that's not my opinions, that's just directly from that paper, the best way I am able to communicate it, 83% protection in healthcare workers. So that's the end of this video, but I just want to tell you about a couple of uh, spooky things here. Now, I'm not a big, um, not a big social media user really, but um, students, um, students bullied me to having a Facebook. Facebook page so I did one years and years ago 
Um, I put the links, nothing very interesting on it, but um, it was basically for my students, so they wanted me to do it, so I did it. And it's been useful for students, di different places around the world who appreciate it. Anyway, um, I, I put the link for the video we did with Dr. Tess Laurie on Facebook, and we got, uh, we got fact-checked. And uh, again, uh, and uh, of course the one with uh, P.I. Corey got fact-checked. Now, I'm not, I don't know what I'm allowed to tell you, <coughs> tell you and what I'm allowed to put on really, but it's public domain. So I've put, I've put the link, I've put the link in the description. You can click on it and you can read the, the, uh, the, the, the critique uh, that uh, some uh, person purporting to be an academic um, wrote up. Um, he didn't indicate on the the person writing the critique on 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 here didn't indicate whether they were paid or not. Uh, but this is just one report from the um, this one one report from direct quote from the paper that we've been looking at from the All India Institute of Medicine. Uh, the safety of the drug has been established in large scale use in the last four decades for various indications such as onchocerciasis, scabies, head lice, and other parasitic infections. Um, th this reviewer said that this toxicology data is not relevant to studies of ivermectin in SARS coronavirus 2, which uh, goes against. So th this review goes against that. Well, that point of that review goes against everything I understand about uh, or almost everything I understand about toxicology and things like that. It just doesn't make any sense to me. But there again, I might be a bit cognitively challenged in this area read it for yourself it's there it's in the public domain so that's what that paper says 83 percent protection against healthcare workers and the cost is essentially uh, zero so that is a research report from india for your perusal thank you for watching